of a battery state of charge. In our example, an in-service cell at full charge should provide about 2.2 volts. As the cell discharges, the voltage decreases. When a cell is almost completely discharged, its voltage falls off rapidly to a value called its final voltage. The final voltage of a lead-acid cell is about 1.7 volts. The closer the cell voltages are to full charge, the more likely it is that the battery will be able to provide backup power when it's needed. A better indication of a battery's ability to provide backup power is its capacity. Battery capacity and cell capacity are the same. Capacity may be tested, but on a less frequent basis than voltage testing. The capacity of a cell is defined by its ability to supply a constant current for a specified number of hours. Cell capacity is typically rated in ampere hours. For example, a cell that's rated at one ampere hour when fully charged would be able to supply a current of one amp for one hour before fully discharging to 1.7 volts. Manufacturers typically rate cells based on an eight hour rate of discharge. For example, this cell is rated at 200 ampere hours. This means it should be able to supply 25 amps of current per hour continuously for 8 hours for a total of 200 ampere hours. The capacity of a cell changes with different current demands. For example, if the load demands 35.2 amps from this cell, the cell will be able to provide 35.2 amps for only 5 hours. This translates into an ampere hour rating of 176. So the cell capacity or ampere hour rating is lower at higher discharge currents. On the other hand, if the load demands 20 amps, the cell can provide this current for 12 hours. This represents an ampere hour rating of 240. So the cell capacity is higher at lower discharge currents. Another indication of a battery state of charge is the specific gravity of the cells. The specific gravity of a cell is defined as the density of the cell's electrolyte in relation to the density of water. The electrolyte in a cell is composed of sulfuric acid and water. As a cell is discharged, sulfuric acid leaves the electrolyte and combines with the lead in the plates decreasing the concentration of sulfuric acid in the electrolyte. So a test that reflects the concentration of sulfuric acid in the electrolyte will show the state of charge of that cell. That test is for the specific gravity of the electrolyte. The specific gravity of the electrolyte is the density of the sulfuric acid in relation to the density of the water in electrolyte. For example, one pint of water weighs about one pound. The weight of one pint of sulfuric acid is a little more than 1.8 pounds. When specific gravities of liquids are computed, a value of one is given to water. The specific gravity of sulfuric acid is 1.839. Any mixture of water and sulfuric acid then would have a specific gravity between one and 1.839. The specific gravity in a fully charged cell is typically around 1.210. As the cell discharges, the specific gravity of the electrolyte decreases because sulfuric acid leaves the electrolyte and combines with the lead in the plates of the cell. When the cell is recharged, the specific gravity increases because sulfuric acid is driven off the plates and back into the electrolyte. So the specific gravity of a cell provides another indication of a battery state of charge and its ability to provide the required backup power when it's needed. In-service cell voltage, capacity, and specific gravity are all indicators of a battery state of charge and its ability to provide backup power. And the value of each of these indicators is related to the value of the other two indicators. The relationship of voltage, capacity, and specific gravity can be shown using a simplified chart. The vertical axis represents values of cell ampere hours, cell specific gravity, and cell voltage. The horizontal axis represents time. The time is divided into discharge time and charge time. 
Separate lines are used to indicate changing cell ampere hours, cell specific gravity, and cell voltage. When a fully charged cell discharges, cell voltage drops gradually. Then when the cell is almost completely discharged, the voltage falls off rapidly to its final voltage. At the same time, the cell's ampere hours of capacity decreases at a constant rate. And the cell's specific gravity decreases at the same rate as the ampere hours. When the cell is discharging, its voltage, and especially its specific gravity, change at a relatively constant rate. So a measurement of either cell voltage or specific gravity during discharge will give a fairly reliable indication of how many ampere hours of capacity are remaining in the cell. However, when the cell is recharging, cell voltage and specific gravity change at irregular rates. Cell voltage jumps instantly and then gradually increases till it matches the output voltage of the battery charger. Cell specific gravity increases gradually as sulfuric acid is driven off the cell plates and mixed with the electrolyte. It may take weeks or even months for the sulfuric acid to thoroughly mix with the electrolyte and for the specific gravity to return to its normal value. Because cell voltage and specific gravity change at irregular rates when the cell is recharging, they are not reliable indicators of cell ampere hour capacity when the cell is recharging. Better indications are the voltage and current meter readings on the battery charger. When the cells first start to recharge, both voltage and current are relatively high. As the cells approach full charge, the voltage gradually increases and then stabilizes, while the current gradually decreases and then stabilizes. The cell and battery ratings covered in this part of the program are the traditional indicators of a battery's ability to provide backup power. If you understand the relationship of cell voltage, capacity, and specific gravity, you can compare rated values with measured values to determine whether a cell or a battery is good, marginal, or bad. A battery charger serves several functions in a typical battery system. First, it converts an alternating current input into a direct current output. Second, the charger applies the direct current output to a battery and controls the output in order to keep the battery fully charged. The charger may also provide some or all of the direct current to the DC load. The battery supplies the DC load only when the load exceeds the capacity of the charger or when a power outage prevents the charger from providing direct current to the load. Chargers can vary in size and design, but most have some common components or features. An AC breaker is provided for connecting the charger to or disconnecting the charger from its source of alternating current. A DC breaker is provided for connecting the charger to or disconnecting it from its DC loads, which include the battery. A DC voltmeter indicates the charger output voltage being supplied to the DC loads. Normal voltage in this system is usually a little above mid-scale. And a DC ammeter indicates the charger output current. A battery charger will also typically have a switch or timer that is known as a float equalize switch. The terms float and equalize refer to two different charge voltage levels that may be applied to the battery. When the timer is off or at zero, the charger operates at a normal preset float voltage. When the timer is activated, the charger operates at a predetermined higher equalized voltage for the number of hours for which the timer is set. After the time elapses, chargers with a timer automatically return to the float charge voltage. Chargers with a switch must be manually switched to the float charge mode. In addition to the float equalize switch or timer, a potentiometer is provided for adjusting the float charge voltage. And another potentiometer is provided for adjusting the equalized charge voltage. In addition to all the components just shown, a charger may have a number of other components. Some chargers may have a pilot light. The light is typically on when there is an AC input to the charger. A charger may also have a ground fault detection system. 
The system on this charger uses positive and negative ground fault indicating lights. Both lights are typically dimly lit. If the positive side of the DC system becomes grounded, the positive light will glow brightly and the negative light will go out. If the negative side of the DC system becomes grounded, the negative light will glow brightly and the positive light will go out. This charger also has positive and negative ground test buttons. Each button, when pressed, will introduce a ground in its respective part of the system. The buttons may be used to check that the ground fault detection system and lights are functioning properly. Finally, a charger may contain a variety of alarms and relays, including a high voltage alarm and relay, a low voltage alarm and relay, and a power failure alarm and relay. The specific components can vary from one charger to another, so it's good to learn which components are included on the chargers in your system. In this topic, we looked at a typical battery system. We covered the components of a lead-acid cell and described the electromechanical actions that occur when a cell is charging and discharging. We discussed cell and battery ratings, including voltage, capacity, and specific gravity. If for any reason alternating current to the